According to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, in 2022, people in the United States, on average, spent approximately one whole day and a third of a day in leisure activities each week when they averaged their leisure time throughout the week. So if you were to add up leisure time from each day, that would typically come to around one and one third days of leisure activity. Now, this is not something I'm to, I am making a judgment about, but just as something to consider. Um, various members of our congregation might say, oh, that sounds like so much leisure time, whereas others of us might say, wow, I think I have more. But regardless of your circumstance, um, let's consider how our human nature is. Now, oftentimes in our society, we do need time for rest and relaxation. It's important to recharge and to take time to take care of ourselves. However, as our readings today also alluded to, human nature is simply to give in to temptation, to sometimes be lazy and selfish, going beyond just self-care and, and resting up, but rather valuing ourselves first and to put off God's callings for us um, to, to, to help others and to help um, do the actions to, to be the people he wants us to be. As referred to by Paul in his letter to the Romans, our flesh um, and the weakness in it can refer to both our physical and emotional comfort, which can lead us to value our own comforts and well-being over the heed heeding the needs of others. The sin of the flesh can be reflected in various ways. We might choose to do as we please or, um, or spend more time just doing what we want to do instead of being motivated by the Holy Spirit. Giving in to the flesh might also be considered not acting on what God has called you to do. And we want to practice the values of kindness and humility instead of this hedonistic or self-pleasure-seeking mindset. We've all been in these moments before. Um, as a society, we like our TV, socialization, internet time, and that's nothing wrong with that. We want to make, but we want to make sure that we also have the discipline to take care of ourselves, and then also have time to help others. Paul discusses our obligation, which is to turn to God instead of centering on these impulses and too much um, laziness or self-centeredness. Now, when, I, when this obligation comes up, I don't want you to think of a long list of things to do or rules that must be followed, because instead we can turn to God and follow his will for our lives instead of having to strictly follow guidelines or be in an endless to-do list of things we must do to help other people. Our obligation is meant to be inspired by joy, which is focused on the promise of God's future for our world and its current state right now. Now, we often hear tons of bad news, and social scientists have even analyzed how perceptions and thoughts of dread of the future have impacted our own culture and society. Uh, for instance, uh, spending habits, family structures, and even tidying up your home. Uh, if you've heard of the Swedish death organizing um, as a way to get rid of excess material goods so that when, after you pass away, your loved ones will have fewer items to deal with. These all things contribute and are influenced by dread of the future. However, uh, my goal is for us to find courage in the face of the messiness, the stress, the sadness, and the grief, not to ignore those things, uh, not to belittle them, but in spite of them, to also foster hope, hope that brings about joy in our hearts with the knowledge that God is doing good work in us and he has good things in store for the future. Um, and so as we grow into the people God calls us to be, we can let our despair shrink. Um, hope that fosters joy can help us become better versions of ourselves and it sticks with us regardless of what our emotions might be telling us at the moment we are not just stuck in a stressful grief stricken str um, sad society but our present and the future can have joy if we make that choice and take actions to foster that i'd like you to consider that we aren't left to simply hope the future will be okay God has told us that he is managing the future through our scriptures. 
Consider how odd it would be for someone to go up to you and say, I'm so worried about tomorrow. I'm worried that gravity might not work correctly and I would hate to just be spiraling off into outer space because of gravity not working like normal. Oh, such a concern. If someone were to say that to you, you'd probably give them a very puzzled look and be like, huh? Why do you think gravity is just gonna change tomorrow? Well, with a similar perspective, I'd like us to think about um, statements such as, I hope God blesses us next year. Or I hope God provides for us in the years to come. Those, those statements can be in some ways just as silly as the, oh, I hope gravity works like normal tomorrow statement. So perhaps a better way to frame our, frame our minds is to consider um, to strive to cultivate joy in our present living through helping ourselves foster the bright future that God has already promised for his creation. As Psalm 139 says, God's knowledge is too amazing for us. We don't know the details of the future, only God does, but we know that God understands more about the present and the future than we ever could. We don't have to let the unknown worry us. We don't have to fear what we don't understand. When we consider things to be black and white, when making decisions, thinking about all the things going on in the world, it's good for us to remember that both the light and the darkness are the same to God meaning that he sees through all of these things. He understands the gray areas. He has that knowledge. And we can let God, we can trust God to do those, to take care of things, to, to hold the whole world together. We can rely on him to see our challenges and understand things that we cannot. So therefore we shouldn't be slaves to uncertainty, but rather value, but rather um, avoid having a, mindset that that focuses on scarcity and building up our own resources we can instead help others and choose to dispel that fear furthermore paul says in his letter that we are heirs of christ meaning that we have a lineage that's not of genetics or biology or family trees but rather through a different type of family a church family one that goes back to the disciples of christ himself through the years, the decades, the centuries, believers have passed on to us uh, writings in scripture, including the hymn from today and the letter from Paul. And along with that also comes hymns and other ways of worshiping God, as well as things that have helped our society. In a broader view of things, over the decades and centuries, educational resources have become available to far more people in our world. And likewise, people have made great strides for equity and inclusion, and to help overcome the bigotry of the past. And although there's certainly much work left to be done in this, these areas and others, um, the progress that has been made and the lives that have, been benef that have benefited from these efforts should not be forgotten. And as we are considered ourselves, considered to be heirs in Christ, um, there's much that we can do to keep on this work. As Paul says, the revelation of God's sons and daughters is something that is not a far-off event. Now, I know the word revelation can sound very, very much so in the future. However, the revelation of God's sons and daughters, of those realizing their, their identities in Christ, can result in day-to-day -day things being done to help other people. So each day as individuals, we can act with love. We can make choices even in small steps to, to help improve our world. And this can be done through using the fruits of the Spirit. Joy is one such of those fruits. And it goes along with love, peace, kindness, good, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Instead of just being these things, act on them. Um, and our faith inspires us to do that. But also, I'd like for you to consider that sometimes our actions can help build up our faith. We might not always feel like doing something to help out or taking some extra time to be with someone or taking the time to, to reflect on God's goodness. But performing these actions can also foster joy. We might not always have the joy to begin with, but by doing these things to honor God and help serve our neighbors, we can develop that inner joy that also comes along with, with hope. 
And so along with this idea of our actions and hesitancy at times to carry them out, uh, I'd like you to consider what a character in a video game called Animal Crossing, this character once said, love is wanting to do the things that you don't really want to do. And so we do things, even if our flesh or our, or our inner being is exhausted, tired, or just hesitant, we can do things despite of that and then foster that joy that comes from helping out our world. And this is all not without getting the rest we need and taking care of ourselves, but making sure that we, we can be disciplined to help others and make ourselves available instead of always putting our, our leisure first. And joy can also come from expectation as we look to the future. As the letter from Romans states, a pregnant woman can have joyful anticipation, expecting the birth of her child. And although I myself cannot relate to that metaphor, um, I have considered the joy I experienced when I was going through the process of adopting my cats. But I did promise Britt Lizzie that I would not talk about my cats extensively in a sermon. So instead, I'd like us for to, cons to consider the joyful anticipation that fans of movies, books, and video games sometimes have when there's going to be a new release. So for instance, if you're a book fan, you might re remember the Harry Potter series which um, had eight books come out over the course of almost over 10 years. And so even though there was a long time span between each book, the fans would celebrate and anticipate what was coming up. They'd talk to each other, they'd have parties. Um, and when that book was out, they would just bubble over with excitement. Likewise, uh, for movie, movie fans, the Lord of the Rings three-part movie series um, often had fans come together and share in their excitement before the second and third movies came out, anticipating which characters might be portrayed or which scenes the movie might show, uh, what wonderful things the movie might provide them with uh, for their entertainment and excitement for that story. And then additionally, for video game enthusiasts, they, um, when a game is announced to be released, sometimes even a year in advance, these enthusiasts will mark their calendar with that day, look forward to it, they'll pre-order the game, and they might even take the day off of work to ensure that they can enjoy it right when it's released. And so with a lot of these experiences, it's not the moment of obtaining the thing they're waiting for that brings joy, but often at joyful anticipation over time. And regardless of your own hobbies, what they may be, I encourage you to consider how as followers of Christ, we can anticipate what God has in store for us, like the fans I mentioned, expressing our joy through being in community with each other, discussing about things, good things that have happened and joy that we've had in the present and joy that we anticipate in the future. And so just like the fans of that book, movie, series, and video games, um, they, did not, they were not deterred by the uncertainty about, well, with, with what's released be, be good or just as wonderful as they imagined, but they had trust that the author, developer, or director of those, of those media would provide them with, some, with an experience that they would enjoy and that was worth waiting for. So we don't know what the future will look like, but based on uh, what God has bestowed on us through Christ and the Holy Spirit, we know that God will continue to be with us. And so let us let us find that joy despite our emotions and to acknowledge reality, but also not let this, that quench our desire to seek the future without the fear of the unknown.